Okay, let's talk about how to name and label isotopes. In order to do that, we first need to define what an isotope is. So we're going to say isotopes are different forms of an atom with differing numbers of neutrons. So what's that all about? Let's take a quick review. Remember, an atom is made of protons, that's these positive things right here, neutrons, which are neutral and have no charge, and electrons, which are negative. Protons and neutrons are found in the nucleus of an atom. Electrons are outside the nucleus. So this right here is an example of a nucleus with two protons and two neutrons. Um, this brings up an important thing to mention. Okay, so what makes an atom what it is, is the protons. The number of protons determine the atom. Notice that this has two protons. Your periodic table will tell you the identity of any atom that has two protons because the protons determine what element it is. The neutrons do not. So you can change the neutrons, it's still the same atom. You can change the protons, but if you change the protons, it's no longer the same atom. Here's the periodic table. There's two numbers to be aware of. The atomic number and the atomic mass. Atomic number tells you how many protons. The atomic mass tells you how many protons and neutrons. So this is telling you how many protons are in the nucleus. This is telling you how many particles grand total are in the nucleus. So notice this is just protons, this is protons plus neutrons. So this number is always bigger, right? Well, have a look at the periodic table. You'll notice every, oh, wait, where is the camera? There we are. Every element has two numbers. Look at copper, for example. Copper has a smaller number and a bigger number. Well, that's because the smaller number is the number of protons, that's the atomic number. The bigger number is the sum total of protons and neutrons. That's the bigger number, it's the atomic mass. So smaller number is the atomic number, larger number is the atomic mass. It's the thing for zinc, atomic number, atomic mass. It's the thing for aluminum, where are we? Okay, there we are, atomic number and atomic mass. Same thing for chlorine, atomic number, atomic mass. All right, so that's where you find it on the periodic table. Now. How do we actually go about writing the names of these? Well, let's go and look at what isotopes again are. And I'm going to use, um, let's say, ooh, what's a good one to do? Let's do lithium. That's a nice, easy example because I don't have to draw too many circles. So lithium is defined by, yeah, let's bring this back. See that number three up there? That number three tells you lithium has three protons. No matter what form of lithium, it has three protons. So I'm going to draw one, two, three circles and put little pluses in there to show that they're protons. And I want to do two different isotopes of lithium to make my point. So both of those isotopes, if they are lithium, they have to have three protons. I'm going to change the number of neutrons though. So this form of lithium has three neutrons. And this form of lithium, we're going to give one, two, three, four neutrons. One, two, three, four neutrons. Okay, so three protons each means it's lithium, but they have different number of neutrons. Therefore, these are isotopes of each other. Now, uh, I'll give them like three electrons just to complete the picture here. Electron, electron, electron. So, okay, having mentioned that, we have two different isotopes of lithium. How do we go about writing it? First of all, let's do the name, and then we'll do the symbol. So first of all, the name, because it has three protons, the periodic table tells us anything with three protons is a lithium. So their name both involves lithium. So that's why I've written the word lithium below each. Now, every name for a particular isotope has the mass in it. So see the mass, remember the atomic mass, as a reminder, is how many protons and neutrons. So every number contains the mass in it. So let's count it up. 
One, two, three, four, five, six. There's six particles in the nucleus, three protons, three neutrons. So that's six. So you put that in the name. We call this lithium six. Check this one out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Four neutrons, three protons. That's seven particles in the nucleus. So it has a mass of seven. So we call it lithium seven. So that's how you write a name for an isotope. It's the name of the element and then the atomic mass for that particular isotope. Again, name of the element and the mass for this particular isotope of lithium. Now the symbol, okay, lithium is Li, so the symbol is Li for both of them. However, we gotta put numbers on there. Oops, I dropped a pen, okay. Um, what you do is you put two numbers on there. In the upper left corner, you put the mass. So there's a six, because this is lithium six, and here there's a seven, because it's lithium seven. Now, what goes, there's a number that goes down here too. The number that goes here is the number of protons. So atomic mass on top, atomic number on bottom. The number of total protons and neutrons on top, protons only on the bottom. So remember, lithium is defined by three protons. So both of these are going to be having a three there. Okay, so that's how you do a symbol for an element. So just to review, Remember that the number of protons defines the element. That means all isotopes of lithium will have this number three here. However, this could change. For example, if you took away one of these neutrons and had two neutrons and three protons, there would be five things, which means there'd be a five here and there'd be a five here. Or if you added one more neutron to make eight things in the nucleus here, you'd have an eight here and an eight here. Okay, so that gives you an idea for um, how that works. So here's a couple to try out. Give these a shot. Can you give the name and symbol for something with 11 protons, 14 neutrons, or 27 protons, 30 neutrons? Pause now and give it a try. All right, if you've paused, let's see what you got. 11 protons. So on the periodic table, 11 protons. Oop, that's sodium. So, okay, name is sodium. Remember, you got to have the mass number in there. So mass is protons plus neutrons. 11 plus 14 is 25. So this is called sodium 25. Symbol. Okay, remember sodium is Na. All sodiums have 11 protons. So all isotopes of sodium have 11 protons. And then 25 is the mass, right? Protons plus neutrons is 25. That's the reason why I put a number 25 up there. As for this one, 27 protons. We check. 27 protons is cobalt. Cobalt. Put a dash, and then 27 plus 30 is 57. Cobalt 57, the mass number, remember, is these two put together. And then as for here, cobalt is capital C, lowercase o. So there's the symbol. And then um, the next part would be the... Oh, yes, let's grab this. Cobalt has 27 protons as a reminder, so 27 goes down here, and the mass is 57. So 57 goes up there. Here, let's go ahead and try another one. See? Let's go the other way. If I give you a name or a symbol, can you find the number of protons and neutrons? Go ahead and pause now. Give it a try. I'll go over it. All right, ready? Here we go. Titanium 46. So titanium... You can look on the periodic table. Titanium is this element right here, number 22. All right, so titanium is defined by having 22 protons. So um, how do you get the number of neutrons? Remember, it's mass number minus the number of protons. So mass number minus atomic number equals number of neutrons. So that means 46 minus 22 equals 24. That's how many neutrons this thing has. Next, nitrogen. You have to recognize this is nitrogen. Remember, the number of protons goes down here. Even if you forgot that, if you recognize that as a symbol for nitrogen, look, nitrogen is defined by having seven protons. Okay, seven protons. How many neutrons? Take the mass number, 15, minus the number of protons, and that's eight neutrons. All right, that's how you do it.